Greetings of the day. Hope you are having a good time. Let's get started with our new session. In this video, we are going to talk about principles and practices of food and beverage control. So this video will focus on introduction to food and beverage control, then objectives of control system, problems in control system, and essential of a control system. So what is food and beverage control? Now, a food and beverage control may be defined as the guidelines and regulations of the cost and revenue of operating the catering activity in a food and beverage establishment. So, a control system covering the sale of all food and beverages is vital to accomplish maximum return. Now, in large establishments, you will see a department known as food and beverage controls who will make sure to have a smooth control system in various outlets and in smaller establishments an assistant manager of a particular outlet will do the same job so we might not see a entire department working in smaller establishments a very important note a control system should be simple to use for entire food and beverage team what are the objectives of food and beverage control? The first one is analysis of income and expenditure. Second, prevention of waste. Establishment and maintenance of standards. Pricing, prevention of fraud and management information. Now let's understand this in detail. The first objective is analysis of income and expenditure. Here, the analysis is only concerned with income and expenditure, which is obviously related to the FNB operations. Now on the revenue side, emphasis is laid on sales mix and trends in food and beverage sales and something which is very important that is average spending power, number of customers. And on the other side, which is the cost side, Importance is on food and beverage portion cost, departmental food and beverage cost, and labor cost. The second objective is establishment and maintenance of standards. Food and beverage control helps the establishment to set the standards which could be used for a particular operation. Those are called as standard operational procedures. In short, SOPs. Now, these are the manuals which are available to all staff for reference. So, the minute you join a particular team of a, a restaurant, you will be given a bunch of SOPs that you are expected to read and understand. A regular checking on standards will help establish a proper control. Next objective is pricing. Here, an important objective of food and beverage control is indeed pricing. Now, this is to provide a complete base for menu pricing, including quotations for special functions and banquets. Now, accurate food and beverage cost and other main establishment cost, as well as general market considerations like average spending power of the customer, the prices charged by the competitors, and the prices that the market will accept are considered when you're doing a pricing for your particular menu. So pricing cannot be done just because you have few things in mind or your operation demands something. There are internal and external factors which will have an impact when you are deciding menu pricing. Prevention of waste. Here, the main purpose of control in general is also to ensure that current results are in accordance with the set standards. These are your SOPs and indeed the objectives of the business such as food sales or beverage sales that you want to achieve or the kind of gross profit margin you have kept. This can be done only by preventing the wastage of material caused by various reasons like poor preparation or over preparation or failure to use standard recipes. So the minute you have control on uh, the kind of recipes you're using or the kind of yield that you are generating, your prevention of waste will automatically happen. Management information, 
a system of food and beverage control has an important function in the provision of data for periodical reports on current operations now accurate up to date information will make sure a complete analysis of performance for each outlet of an establishment for comparison with set standards which are laid down so what is happening here is you have sops in place already now when you're doing control simultaneously these various factors are going to help you to generate reports which will understand where you stand when it comes to comparing the standards that you have laid and the actual operation that is happening now all this information is going to be get collected collated and then further analyze it and then presented annually or with the use of software or manually you can present it now what are the problems in food and beverage control system we're going to talk about six main problems here the first is unpredictability of the volume of business perishability of the product departmentalization unpredictability of the menu mix and the short cycle of catering operations now when we're saying perishability of the product here what happens is food let it be raw or cooked is a perishable commodity and it has a limited life hence it is required to be procured in correct quantity and quality then needs to be properly stored and processed beverage or beverages are normally not as perish perishable as food and it contributes to the easier control now unpredictability of volume of business here sales unpredictability and instability causes problem regards to the quantities of commodities to be purchased or prepared because maybe on weekends you will have a lesser number of customers walking into your restaurants and you will have more customers coming in on weekends this could absolutely change because you don't have controls on the kind of market change that is happening unpredictability of menu mix it is necessary to offer a wide choice of menu items it is therefore essential to be able to predict not only the numbers of customers who will be at the facility at a particular period but also what the customer selection will be from the alternatives offered on a menu so it is important for you as a restaurant owner to make sure that you have good number of choices on the menu card now when you do that it is also important for you to predict to an extent it is not possibly uh, you know for you to do it 100% but you can definitely try and predict it looking at your previous data uh, in in terms of number of customers you will expect in the outlet let's say on weekdays or weekends or for lunch or for dinner or for breakfast in order to control cost effectively it is necessary to have some method of volume forecasting as a part of your total food and beverage control system now short cycle of catering operations here what happens is the speed at which catering operations take place allow little time for many control tasks because when you are in a busy restaurant everything is happening really fast items ordered one day are often received or processed and sold the other day or the next day so the further problem because of perishability of most products so maybe you are ordering for something today and it is going to be received after two days further to that you're going to process that and store it or sell it now when this entire process is happening you have to keep in mind the perishability of that particular product so the storage has to be done properly departmentalization now many catering establishments have several products and service departments offering different products and operating under different policies now it is hence necessary to be able to produce separate trading results for each selling activity now what happens is your coffee shop is going to work in a different way than your fine dining restaurant they both will have their own styles of service their different menu or they will have their different policies 
so it is important for you to have a control on all these operations which are happening in different styles use of technology in fnb control system now this is extremely important in today's time when we are moving towards uh, having everything on uh, the digital platform and manual or uh, documentation or a uh, manual kot system or bot system or uh, let's say um, uh, order giving is absolutely less now with an advancement of point of sale technology food and beverage control has become easier various companies offer different softwares which offer solutions to any food and beverage outlet so the required components as a part of electronic point of sale now remember while investing in any software we are making sure that the system is comprehensive cost of maintaining the same is calculated and it is easy to operate and it has to be effective to generate various management reports why do we go for software the reasons are the first one is historical data will enable to forecast the menu item popularity and profitability so it's going to help you to plan a better menu with menu engineering menus can be used to decide precise sales and production quantities to have good control on kitchen production and use of raw material now purchase ordering when this is happening this can be a base on minimum stock levels and forecast demand from production planning and match delivery notes and invoices this you will learn it in depth when we do purchasing chapter the system maintains stock levels in stores it tracks it will track the issues which are happening to various outlets and consumption of raw material now when we say uh, the softwares are also going to help in analyzing the menu so consumer menu choices can be recorded and analyzed so you then know which is the fast moving item and a slow moving item very important objective of taking a software is various report generation is going to happen which will analyze the income and expenditure hope you all paid attention to uh, the information that i shared for this the quiz link is in the video description go ahead and attempt the quiz these are the reference books that i have used on that note thank you and see you soon in the meantime you all take care of your health